hello my lovely viewers i welcome you to my channel once again and the name still remains global chateau and you can call me or mama and please like you have been doing for me always if you are new to the channel please don't forget to subscribe you like you share you comment and uh, please today i'm taking you all the way to tanzania there's this special park i want to take you there and i hope you will enjoy it there's this wildlife park there called arisha national park arisha national park arisha national park covers mount meru yeah mount meru that's a prominent volcano with an elevation of 4566 meters yeah in the arisha region of northern tanzania yeah it is in the northern tanzania yeah uh, the park is small but uh, varied with spectacular landscapes in three distinct areas yeah, in the west the meru crater funnel the jekukumia river the peak of mount meru lies on its rim uh, this park is uh, full of wild animals okay and without wasting much time i'm taking you there so that you see wild animals yourself <laughs> uh, you see giraffes uh, you see zebras and uh, you see uh, monkeys and other wild animals there this very wonderful park and with many trees in this wilderness so um without wasting much time let me take you there and let's enjoy the video and please like i said if you are new to the channel don't forget to subscribe and if you have any comment please drop it under the comment section let's go to arisha national park tanzania enjoy the video the, the, the fig tree the ficus tree which 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 grows on top of the other tree it's on our right hand side you can see the roots you can see the roots are hanging down those are those are what we call air roots if you really uh, see the ending of those roots are red <coughs> the red part is very soft the red part can absorb moisture from the air the red part it can pass information to soge kidogo kidogo or nyuma opati pia we slide slowly driving so that uh, from back there you can also get a nice shot the, the the soft the reddish soft part can pass information to tell the tree if the weather if the condition out here is bad or good if it's very dry it will tell the tree not to use to lose a lot of re, uh, of water and then the, the leaves will turn yellowish and drop by that way the tree will save water and if there is enough sufficient water like now now that reddish part will pass the information tell the tree that there's enough water out here and it will grow more leaves yeah. this is a parasite tree it grows the seed has been dropped by a bird on top of the other tree the roots will rush to the floor once the roots touch the ground that tree becomes an enemy to the host tree. by suffocating it as you know, the trees transport their food by using the backs of the tree. And when the triangular fig tree tranquilizes the tree, you see that nice uh, um, white mahogany tree, the broken. You see that. You see that the 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 the, the parasite. The tree with the V-shape back there, you see the parasite is struggling to reach the floor and start covering the host. They will squeeze and tranquilize the tree to death. And that's why most of the fig tree will find them inside their hollow. Because they grow on top of the other one and kill it and that rotten and then it dies. So after 20 years, mostly 20 years is enough for the parasite to kill the host. Kill the host. Yeah, if you don't take medicine against the tapeworm, Tapeworms will kill you one day. Block the system of your digestive system, and then you can. That's what's happening with these trees. So the trees here 
I'm not saying that we are in big fear, but it looks like the parasite trees are getting more and more in the park. Anyway, they have a very slow growth rate, so it will take many years before they will overcome other trees. Uh, the lifespan of um, fig tree, it can, like the one I showed you in the picture, is about 700 years, so they can live for a long, long time. The roots can go for about a mile to, to seek for water. So even if up here, yeah, even if up here is dry, they can go a mile far away to, to suck water. Um, I was working with a research team back in 2004, 2005 in the Serengeti. And we was at the camp for four months. Every time, since we arrived, every time the drops of water is getting lower and lower and lower. And then we called the park authority that the camp we're staying in, the water supply is not good. And I said, the tank is full. Why are you not getting enough water inside? Then there's somebody who, the plumber come in to fix the problem. He found that the fig tree has found a way and get into the pipe. So it's expanding to block the water so that it will use the water by itself. And then they cut it and take it away and put a new part of the pipe. Then the water supply back to normal. So this tree is very strong. If the roots can travel for a mile to fetch, to get water, that means they can survive anyway. Anyway, for us here, where the tree grows, we know that the water table is not far. So to drill the water or to dig a well, we rely on, rely on those trees. In the old days, they also use it as a tree of worship because it's kind of a ghost. So people go there for a worship. And those, back to those days, there were very few of that. So anywhere there's a big one, huge one, the, the elders will go there for worship. Mostly the Maasai elders. You have seen the log, big logs of trees laying down and used. It's because we don't allow people to take things from the park. What is in the nature has to remain in the nature. What is in the park has to remain in the park. So people will may feel like a nice mahogany tree like this, white wood, good for furniture, why should I not take it? If the park finds you with a mahog piece of mahogany tree that which is not existing outside the park, you're in trouble. Yeah, I'll just feed them to the animals. <laughs> so dead trees are good, it get rotten, it's going to be the home for micro bacteria, small microorganisms. And by that way, we don't lose the chain, we don't lose the ecosystem or cycle of life. We, in Africa, we have a lot of plants. And uh, we say quinine, we say quinine. The tree is here in the park, I'll show you where the malaria medicine has been extracted from. And it grows here very well because it needs a lot of moisture. It's, uh, it's a tree that grows in a, uh, areas with a lot of water. The soil looks very rich. Mm. Soil is very rich in... If, if today the government will say, will ask me where I want to live, I'll rush to the Gorogoro Highlands. Wow. <clears throat> because I'm telling you, you can cut a piece of log and stick it in the ground, it will grow. Wow. The soil has got all that is needed. Nutrients. Nutrients. And uh, the soil there, and as well here, it's very good for growing carrots because it's the fine volcanic ashes. As you know that the carrots can grow very well or they can expand to a good size where the soil is Oh, it's running. The right dica. You, you saw it? I saw it. Yeah, it, that is the smallest antelope we have. It's the red dica. <laughs> it's not a baby. It's a fully grown. It's just, it's just behind this fig tree. Oh, I see it. See it? 
Most mobile very shiny. I, I started I started uh, being an animal person when I was seven. And I started by rescuing the jackal. My home village is along the road from Arusha to Ngorongoron conservation area, further out to Serengeti and Lake Victoria. So when I was young, I used to ask my dad, where are these cars going to? He said, they're safari cars. So I grown up knowing that if I would do it well, I would be a, a safari guy. And I, my dad allows me to be where I am. So I, one morning I was going to fetch water, and I'm on, on my way to fetch water, and with I and my mother, we come across, see how big the, the fig trees can go to. Even if it's fallen down, it's still shooting leaves. So uh, I found a jackal ran over, maybe by a car or something, and lost one of the four legs. And because of the pain, was just laying down. And I asked my mother if we can take it home. I said, we don't want to, we took it home, treated it traditionally, not in a clinic. And the jackal survived. Excellent. And that was my first pet. And then I keep on picking animals, hyrax, you know the hyraxes? Yes, the elephant. Yes, the smallest yeah. elephant. So I picked the hyrax, and maybe by the time I was to go to secondary school, I was having like 15 animals. Just another one here. And then, oh, don't run, don't run. Pull the window, window back, there you go. That's, that's the, the, the animals are running from us. What? <laughs> no, this road takes us a very shy. Who was it? They're, as, I, as I mentioned before, it? The, the tigers are jackal. very shy. Uh. Actually, they are solitary. So the safety, it's... Safety is in your own self, in your own. Nobody's helping you. So anything comes around, you have to take mass, maximum precaution.
best toothbrush even today. The roots from the same bush. Oh, the giraffe in the street. The giraffe on the road. Hey. Oh. Hey. Wow, oh looks my cool. God. Oh, and, oh. and the baby giraffe on the right. So side. just be silent. Yes. Mama puts mama. So you can come up one by one if you want to take a photo. Come on, stand here. And then we're like, they were gonna yell to get in the way, so we were driving, driving again. Okay, got it. So you can take can take photos of them. Yelling will chase the animal. Yes, chases the animal. Okay. And there's a zebra to the left. Wow. Really close. Um, and this one too. I need this guy to be its arms. Oh, yeah, that's in the middle of the street. Did you okay. notice it? You can come up. Okay. Uh, when you said we can swap out one by one. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Is there like a little one? Arnie, like. Oh, sorry. Oh, you want to. Oh, she's. Oh, oh, run! Oh. We move a bit forward. Still fairly close. Actually, that's going to be a good angle. Just hold on. Just hold on. You move a bit forward, then you can through the window. You can take through the window. Hi! Can you please be silent, eh? Please. She's a little bit irritated because oh, she is with the baby. I can tell it's a, I can tell it's a woman because the eyebrows. So you can take the picture through the glass. And then another coming in front. Oh yeah. Just when we took the safari is over more animals. And then we have flamingos that I've never seen in my life. Yeah, two, three, four giraffes. I finally five get, giraffe I finally get to see flamingos move out my way, Sean. I keep finally get to see flamingos. Well, can I stop and I stop? I know, I just get, I never seen flamingos before. I've never seen flamingos before. Come on, let's get the flamingos. All I did was take one picture. Freshly cooked flamingos. That's been a dream of mine. Just eat a freshly cooked flamingo. I wonder if girls make a noise. That's a male. That's a male. I tell what they are from their eyebrows.
Okay. Thank you. Right, it's time as we're heading out of the national park. Nice, nice view of some nice good yes. close up with animals, flamingo, just nice stop for zebra a giraffe. and giraffe. Incredible. Flamingos are using this area or the lakes here as a feeding site, but they breed in Lake Natural, which is at the eastern part of Gorongoro Conservation Area. So they fly in here for some days and then they fly out. They don't stay for a long time since this is not a breeding site. So water park just riding out. Bushback crossing. Make sure you got that bushback right. Was it too fast for you? Too fast. Yeah, no, that thing just ran. As soon as we turn this way, family, it just chung. We are heading out of the national park. What a wonderful, what a wonderful the journey through the national park. This is incredible. You got the flamingos. No, I saw you. Very few. Okay. Yeah, but very few. We have hippos here, but the water bodies are very deep and they don't like deep water. Okay. Hippos are not good swimmers as the elephants. Elephants can swim better than the hippos. So they need to touch the floor when they are in the water. Okay. How long can they stay underwater? Totally immersed under the water, five minutes. They cannot stay longer because they are not, uh, they don't have like gills, they cannot breathe under the water. If you find the hippo sleeping, you'll find two black spots pointing out, that is those are the nose. So they, they know how to handle them. That's a perfect, uh, we are heading out. Yeah, we're heading towards the exit. It may take uh, like 45 minutes, it depends on what we see on the way. But um, it may be plus of the time if something good comes, something nice comes out. I'm sure we won't pass it because we're rushing to the gate. We'll give it time. As I said today morning, we are not. The time is not driving us, we are the one who is driving the time. Stop your vehicle! Stop your vehicle! Stop! Bush in the Those are the bush, but they don't really wait for a long time. I think we can't see it. Boy, boy is just quiet. 
baby sitting in the back. Baby riding its mother. See how lucky she is. You got it. Baby riding its mother.
find another very we may find another <laughs> <laughs> it's just a stick. <laughs> now that the male is relaxed, you see he's very relaxed and he's eating fast as he can. Um, so you see how his tail has been.